Hi, my name is Vena. I'm originally from Rio, but I live in Nandi. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm John from Kornabuan, Tapua. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks. Bula, I'm Teopola. Bula, I'm Atlisi. We love listening to Today FM because it rocks in bar. Bula, my name is Tisa. I love listening to Today FM. Today's hit music on Today FM. Tonight, LTA told to clean up its act. Over 1,000 child abuse and neglect cases recorded. And emergency services training for CWM staff. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. The Land Transport Authority has been handed an ultimatum to clean house. Minister for Justice and Anti-Corruption Ayas Said Kayum has written to LTA Chair Vijay Maharaj about anomalies. Edwin Nund reports. The minister has identified serious conflicts of interest with former board members, employees and their family members holding public service permits and licenses. Sayed Kayum says these permits and licenses were acquired while holding office under the name of a spouse or children, apparently for the benefit of employees and board members. The minister also states this is a conflict of interest with respect to monitoring and enforcement of LTA rules and regulations adding such PSV permits and licenses should not have been issued in the first place. Staff and board members now have two options, either surrender their permits and licenses or resign from the LTA within the next three months. The LTA will also not renew the PSV permits or licenses obtained by any former board member or employee while engaged with LTA. Sayed Kayum has also criticized delays in issuing speeding fines caught on speed cameras saying the fines reach drivers well after the 21-day notice to pay the fixed penalty. He adds there are serious anomalies. LTA's internal processes are inept and that regulations don't allow enough time for owners to pay their fines. The minister says fines are delivered late and are defective. All such records must be withdrawn from LTA records and the courts. Sayed Kayum wants LTA to liaise with the Solicitor General's office on amendments to the LTA regulation in regards to electronic speeding tickets. These must be ready in time for Parliament later this month. Edwin Nunn joins us live now. Edwin, has the government said anything about how this affects the LTA service delivery, given that fines make up government's revenue? Jackie, that's exactly what the minister has mentioned in his correspondence, saying the LTA should not treat itself as a revenue-generating entity issuing fines recklessly. He says all Fijians should feel confident and have dignity when dealing with the LTA. The LTA has been told to do everything possible to build this confidence and to ensure all its processes are transparent. Thanks so much for that, Edwin. 1,077 cases of child abuse and neglect were recorded by the Ministry for Women in 2016. The statistics are alarming, and authorities say these figures cannot be taken lightly, and the ministry will strengthen child protection initiatives. Savaira Thamboa has more. The increase in child abuse requires a review of legislation and strengthening of social services. Minister Bunyuanga says while the government tries in its effort to recognize child protection as a policy concern, they lack the resources and legal framework to address the matter. Children are increasingly protected by legislation and are better served by justice systems that protect them as victims, offenders and witnesses. Two, children are better served by well-informed and coordinated child protection services which ensure greater protection against and, re and respond to violence, abuse and exploitation. But after launching the new strategy in 2008, Fiji then undertook a baseline assessment for the existing national child protection systems in partnership with UNICEF. UNICEF Pacific representative Sheldon Yet says they are looking forward to working with the ministry to ensure that a good strategy is in place, especially on the bill for adoption of children. We know that it is being considered in parliament. Um, consideration can take time and it's important that there be ample reflection on the issues but it's also important that the bill go forward, and we look forward to working with the minister. Fiji is one of the few countries in the Pacific that has a national child and protection system. Sabira Tambua, FBC News.
An average of 150 emergency cases are attended to by the staff at the CWM hospital daily. Pranita Prakash reports medical staff are being trained in a bid to improve service delivery. Eight specialist emergency doctors from Australia are training 40 medical staff to help them provide better patient care. Uh, the type of emergencies range uh, broadly across the spectrum from a sick child to airway emergencies where someone might have a choking episode or a cardiac arrest or problems with asthma, uh, cardiac emergencies where they have a heart attack and they have to be managed. Manager nursing at the CWM hospital, Margaret Leong says this training will equip the nurses who deal with emergencies daily. With the medicine, the training has to go side by side. If you train the doctors, you have to train the nurses because we work very closely together. And there's a huge gap with our nursing qualifications at post-grad level. There is no institution yet that is providing any post-grad qualifications in this area, in cardiac care and emergency medicine. So this is very valuable for us. A course in emergency medicine is also being offered by the Fiji National University. This means that there will be more doctors who will be able to provide emergency services. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A doctor who examined the 18-year-old woman allegedly raped by two men at the Vatuanga Golf Course in 2015 testified today that the victim was traumatized when she came to the hospital. Mary Bavandra is the second state witness who today recalled the day she examined the rape victim. Bavandra told the court that she saw the victim was distraught and had multiple bruises and abrasions on her body. She also testified the young woman was shaking and in tears. Josef Ambera and Matorino Mandongo are facing rape charges and will take the stand later this week. Missing passports are not really missing passports. This was the comment made by Immigration Director Nemani Vuniwanga before the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. Vuniwanga says they have sorted out the issue of so-called missing passports. Those that were damaged or needed to be replaced with the manufacturer have come to a solution. We've managed to uh, discuss the way forward and that is for them to, um, in the invoice, uh, for them to, to uh, give us the numbers that are damaged and also replacement numbers. That is to be in uh, all, um, all, all, all the different uh, boxes. The numbers that are missing from those boxes in the series and what are the replacement passports. There is an increasing need to reduce obesity, which is a major cause of kidney failure in Fiji. While celebrating World Kidney Day today, the Mai Pacific Hospital called on all Fijians to watch their lifestyle in an effort to address non-communicable diseases. Sainian Imboila reports. World Kidney Day this year focuses on obesity and its relationship to kidneys. So this year, ironically, it is about obesity and kidney disease. So they have found out that world over there is an increase in the obesity uh, population and this ultimately leads to kidney disease. Near Pacific Hospital laparoscopic surgeon Dr. Critic Marunda Chalam says Fijians can reduce kidney failure by taking good care of their health. Now obesity causes a lot of problems uh, including uh, what you call as uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, high blood pressure and in addition it also contributes to kidney disease uh, because Diabetes by itself and uh, high blood pressure, which is uncontrolled, can lead to kidney failure. The Miyad Pacific Hospital also has plans in place to reach out and raise awareness to help reduce kidney failure in Fiji. The World Kidney Day was first celebrated in 2006. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. Still ahead, researching Fiji's history on female tattooing, and Japanese government provides additional funding.
The Vengia Project, a creative research exhibition drawing inspiration from the practice of Fijian female tattooing, was launched last night. Exhibitors, both local and from overseas, created various artwork on what they say was a rite of passage for Ithau K women, a practice almost entirely wiped out after the arrival of the missionaries in the 1800s. Maggie Boyle reports. A chant paying homage to the Vengia project, an exhibition compiled by five contemporary Fijian women tracing the history of their ancestors. Apparently, um, hundreds or thousands of years ago, Fijian women were tattooed uh, as part of their you know, rites of passage. But for the last hundred plus years, um, tattooing has not been um, uh, done at all. Artist Choana Monalangi, who's been a part of the project since 2015, says it's an emotional journey and one she wants the younger generation to continue. To see what was uh, precious to us as Fijian, Fijian women, and uh, what was taken away as well. Australian-based artist Anita Hume says her contribution is reflective of her maternal links to Nandranga. There is the rediscovery and the power that comes from finding out that we had such a rite of passage. Minister for Women Medesani Vuniwanga says women are the custodians of traditional knowledge and art. It is exhibitions like this which in some way contribute to the revival of the, those traditions and cultures which are so important in identifying where we come from as an individual. The Vengia project involved research from across museums in the United Kingdom as well as New Zealand with the artists sharing their information online. The exhibition here at the Fiji Museum is open to the public for the next three months. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Japanese government today provided an additional funding of over a million dollars under its grant aid program. Japan has contributed around $11 million towards post-tropical cyclone Winston rehabilitation works to date. Japanese ambassador to Fiji, Takuji Hanatani, says they are pleased to support Fiji in their rehabilitation efforts. The same economic and social development program uh, 2.67 million US dollars, which is equivalent to uh, almost uh, 6 million uh, Fiji dollars. And this is an uh, additional uh, contribution to support Fiji's uh, rehabilitation efforts. Koroevolu Park in Nandi was a hive of activity as hundreds of women groups gathered to celebrate International Women's Day. It also marked the launch of the Bar Provincial Craft Show that showcases the work of more than 250 women groups. Ellen Stahls reports. One day after the official celebration of International Women's Day and the Western Division was still in celebratory mode today. Empowering a woman is empowering a family and therefore the family is the foundation of our community. Empowering women is giving women the ability to capitalize in other fields of development. It's this development that is being halted by violence being perpetrated against women in our nation, says Minister for Women, Meriseni Vuniwanga. Violence against women and girls is an obstacle to the achievement of gender equality, development and peace. Women's lives are continuously under threat and they continue to remain vulnerable in our homes and in public places. It is inhumane, a criminal act, and should not be tolerated. The Minister for Women also encouraged young women and entrepreneurs to be able to sell their handicrafts and earn a living for themselves. Around 500 women were present at the show today, eager to display their craft. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama says the value of the products that women make is not only in their homes, but also in the marketplace. Mbaini Marama made this comment while launching the 2017 National Women's Expo yesterday. The expo, which is a platform that connects women to markets, will be held from the 14th to the 16th of June at Suva's Vodafone Arena. We are telling women once again, the business you run, the products you make and grow, and the services you provide are important to our economy and our nation. 
The Just an Illusion singer Julia Zara is in the country and will be performing at the Vodafone Arena in Suva tomorrow. The 21-year-old artist is ready to give a memorable concert to all Fijians and also perform some of her new singles. The show will start at 6 p.m. with tickets selling at $15 for adults and $7 for kids. I think people can expect a lot of different songs, just uh, really me because it's just me and my guitar and um, I think they can expect uh, some new songs, just uh, well things that no one has ever heard yet. This is all, this is where it kind of all started uh, with Just an Illusion. I would love to see you all at my concert. And later on in sports with Jamie, Fiji 7's team has lost Choeli Lutumailangi through injury. But Rachel is next up with business telling us about resilient homes. Yes, Jackie, coming up. Lao Group has the potential to start a yachting industry. And in growing Fiji, efforts to build more cyclone resilient buildings. Stay with us. I'm Prabhu from Nepal and I love listening to you today. My name is Stan Gudla. I'm from Australia, but I'm part region from Matraki, and I love listening to Today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune into Today FM in National Life Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali, and I'm from Ba, and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it, and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasta. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin, and I'm from San Beto, and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In business tonight, the Law Group has the potential to generate more revenue for the country if it is open to the yachting industry. Eleanor Turangaview reports the Law Group, especially the Bay of Islands in Vanua Balavu, offers a glimpse of Fiji that not many tourists get to see. Since 2010, the number of super yachts that come to Fiji has almost doubled to about 60, most staying for over 100 days, and the average spend per super yacht amounting to $370,000. We would love to open up Lao and, um, to, because it is such a beautiful place. It has no tourism at the moment, and we would love to get some tourism dollars into Lao, and I think that will also put the numbers of visiting yachts up. An average of 600 cruise yachts come to Fiji in a year, with the spending per yacht averaging around $30,000, and they stay for well over 100 days. Because Lao is such an attraction to yachts, but they can't get there, the number of yachts that come to Fiji is liable to go up. So now we've got about 650. I'm pretty confident we can knock that up to 1,000. Last week, David Jamieson made a presentation to Prime Minister Warenge Mbainimarama and requested the government consider setting up a clearance port in Lao to allow these yachts to stay in the area. Half the yachts that come to Fiji come through Lao. They sail past it and they come to Savu Savu and they clear in. And then they sailing back against the wind, you know, to Lao is very difficult. So only 17% of the yachts go to Lao. The Prime Minister says the government is seriously considering the request. Hopefully we can get it into the to next year's budget, uh, but we'll have to go out into Unambalab and, and, and uh, ask for permission from the landowners to use uh, that particular area uh, for yachts. Cruise yachts and super yachts spent around $38.8 million in Fiji last year. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. An expected rate increase in the United States has world markets in motion. Here's Savanada from HFC Bank with the details. Thank you, Rachel. Expectations of an interest rate hike by United States Federal Reserve is a hot topic right now. U.S. Treasury yields jumped on Wednesday with benchmark yields hitting their highest level since December. This is a result of a strong gain in U.S. private sector jobs in February. Also, the ADP employment change report yesterday saw a far better result than expected. The actual employment figures increased by 37,000 to 298,000 when a decrease to 190,000 was anticipated. This has sealed expectations that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates this month. Gold prices caught the buzz of this expected rate hike, hitting a five-week low on Wednesday as the dollar gathered strength. 
Within our Fiji economy, the US dollar strengthened against our Fijian dollar by 19 basis points to 0 0.4679, giving us a weaker Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar today when compared to yesterday. The New Zealand dollar is the weakest it has ever been since July last year. That's a wrap from me. Over to you, Rachel. Interesting update. Thanks, Avinata. On to today's exchange rates. The Chinese yuan and the American dollar both strengthened against our Fijian dollar to close at 3.23 and 46 cents respectively, while the Australian and New Zealand dollar weakened to close at 61 cents and 67 cents. Meanwhile, the PNG Kina strengthened slightly to close at 130 Kina. Onto the commodities market, a drop across the index as oil closed over $50 a barrel, gold dropped to $1,209 an ounce, and silver followed suit to close at $17.28 an ounce. The welfare of a building is always crucial as it provides shelter. Therefore, constructing cyclone resilient homes and buildings is vital. In Growing Fiji tonight, stakeholders in the construction sector were given a show by visiting Australian expert Jeff Bonton, who rather how to ensure they build quality standard homes. Over the years, cyclones have destroyed homes and buildings in Fiji. Therefore, knowing construction techniques that strengthen structures against cyclone damage is crucial. We were talking with people about their design criteria that they're using, ways of simplifying the process so that it's not so complex, and that way more Fijians will have access to the types of construction techniques that are required to protect their investments in their own homes and businesses. Jeff Botton from the Cyclone Testing Station in Australia specialises in building performance. He spent the last week with stakeholders showing them how to build affordable, strong homes. If buildings perform really well in a high wind event, then people have homes to stay in, people have businesses to work in, people have shops to buy their things in. The community functions really well. Constructing a cyclone resilient home is a collective effort from the designers to the builders to the suppliers. Everyone plays a pivotal role. So Jeff's discussions have just helped us to, to do the next stage of giving training to the engineers and to people that are in the building process so they know what they're doing and having that testing and having confidence in them. Botton's tips and techniques were well accepted by builders and there are now plans to develop a local cyclone resilient guideline. And that's a wrap from the business desk now with the very latest in sports. Here's Jamie. Thank you Rachel and good evening in sports after the break. Major blow for Fiji 7s as Lutumailangi ruled out of Vancouver 7s. And former champions on waiting list for Mara Sevens. This and more coming up. Tokuta, my Hono Kula and Rasa Lutoka, Dubwa, Talita Kanaporo on a radio of Fujiwa. Bula Narango of Fina, my Koraviri Nandi, out of Talita Kanaporo and a radio of Fujiwa. The Vodafone Fiji 7 team has suffered another blow with Choeli Lutumai Langi ruled out of this weekend's Vancouver tournament. With two players already suspended, coach Gareth Beber has sent an SOS call for speedster Nadaneli Lambalamba, who leaves for Canada this evening. Vasnil Prasad has more. Flipped out wide. Joely Lutumai Langi's pace and power will be greatly missed in the Fiji 7 team in Vancouver this weekend. The speedster has been ruled out due to injury. Everybody else is available for selection apart from Joely Lutumilagi who is struggling with a knee and uh, will miss out on this weekend. Good news, Captain Osea Kolinisau and playmaker Jerry Tuai have recovered and will be considered in the final 12. Uh, namely Osea and, and Jerry who have pulled through and uh, look at the who are progressing day by day in their recovery and training 
um, to, for selection. There are also hopes that Sevuloni Modenadangi will make it into the 12-man squad despite being suspended for three matches. Alifreti Vaitokani and Setereki Bituniata are also expected to play in Canada this weekend. So obviously in terms of numbers and we're seeing where our injuries are at the moment, I won't make any decisions on that until uh, we have to, which is 24 hours before uh, the tournament itself. Uh, and also includes Freddie and, and Setter as well, who missed out last weekend. But that's the whole purpose of having them here in the first place, is they have that ability to jump into the squad when, when needed. Our national side has played three finals in defence here, hungry for a win. I think they will definitely win and uh, we hope for the best. Go Fiji, go. I think they definitely they win this time around. And because they are uh, a good team. The boys have been uh, doing great uh, in the final against uh, uh, South Africa in the US. And uh, if they improve on their discipline and their one to one uh, defense, I believe that uh, they can do better in, uh, in Vancouver. With Joy Lilo to my Langi out, Beba has called in Nathaniel Lamba Lamba, who flies out tonight to join the camp in Canada. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Telecom Fiji Warriors winger John Stewart hopes his exposure to top-level club rugby will benefit his team when they take on Tonga A in the Pacific Rugby Challenge. Stewart, who had a stint in Super Rugby last year, will start on the wing for the Warriors in their PRC opener tomorrow. Vasna Prasad reports. The former Super Rugby Sanulf club winger John Stewart is ready to make a comeback in style for the Fiji Warriors team in the Pacific Rugby Challenge. Especially with some experience, I've learned playing overseas and uh, hopefully I can add the experience and depth to the team. He's one of the leaders in the team and one of the senior players and uh, the experience that he brought into the team. The 28-year-old has blended well with the team. Especially with the uh, new boys in the squad, I mean youth, uh, youthful boys, really blending well, really looking forward to the game tomorrow. The side rounded up its preparation with captains Ran earlier today. Skipper Moses Evoca is confident of a positive result. To do some execute out of. Uh... Back to our sports bulletin. Lautoka's Churchill Park is ready to host the FIFA World Cup Stage 3 qualifying match between Fiji and New Zealand. The match will be the first event to be held at the park since it was closed over a year ago to undergo major renovations. And Fiji football also hopes that history will be on its side when they take on the All Whites once again in the Sugar City. Meli Tavanga reports. Churchill Park received the facelift of over $1 million. The grandstand running tracks, the pitch and other facilities have been upgraded. I can hear and everything from them that it's a very international size stadium and now the pitch and the facilities and everything so it will be good for the nation as such to have sporting events here. Rajas Patel says this ground is perfect to host crucial matches. The last time Fiji met New Zealand in a friendly match on this very ground, they upset New Zealand 2-1. It's been a lucky ground for us, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, the game has evolved and you know, football, you know, as we see all around the world, uh, you cannot predict uh, any small team can be a big team and it is something that we hope National coach Christoph Gomel says the game against New Zealand is going to be tough and they have to be on their toes. It will be hard, to be honest. Uh, the, the full power team, I will not have. This is sure already. But I trust the other. They have to take uh, their, their responsibility. It's like to, it, uh, when you are a group, it's like that. I don't speak about a team, I speak about a group. They will have to take their own responsibility. And Meanwhile, Fiji FA is in the process of getting New Zealand-based players James Hoyt and Rinald Prasad, while Wellington Phoenix's Roy Krishna has confirmed his attendance. Fiji will face New Zealand on the 25th of this month. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Local Sevens Club Giants, Wardens and Red Rock is most likely to miss the 41st Fiji Betamara Sevens after failing to register on time. However, Maros Rugby Club President Lawrence Tickeram says both teams are on the waiting list. 64 teams are all but confirmed for the main competition, while eight women's and eight oldies teams will feature in their respective categories. These teams still need to submit team lists within the next 14 days to confirm their spots for the tournament on the 24th and the 25th of this month at ANZ Stadium. Of those teams as well, they are on standby, meaning that if none of these teams confirm within the next 14 days with the uh, submission of team lists and players and coaches' names and attending the coaches' briefing, we would uh, we would probably reconsider. We would consider uh, other teams coming in. 
It's being held as the greatest comeback in European Champions League and one of the best ever in football history. A star-studded Barcelona has become the first side to rebound from four goals down on aggregate to charge into the quarterfinals of the European tournament. That's it from sports. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. It's not every day you get pulled over by police to be handed flowers. But yesterday, women in a number of cities were treated to the lovely gesture. Find out more after the break. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. As we move into wireless times, it can be hard to figure out what to do with all your gadgets that need a connection to function. Well, you're not the only one that's been thinking about this. Global developers have already released a device called the AirJack. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. As much as we hate to be the bearers of bad news, there's more to come. Now, I won't keep you hanging, I'll just relay the news. There is more rain in store for us as the top of low pressure remains slow moving over Fiji and that is why we're having rain and thunderstorms. Now, let's see what the situation was like in the west. Conditions were fine in the morning but rain took over and more is expected for the western division due to another trough that is approaching Fiji from the west. Eastwards from Pak Suva, a cloudy day to begin with and yes, rain and fiery thunderstorms took charge in the afternoon and more showers are expected by later tonight. And up north, a sunny warm day with temperatures at 32 degrees while Savu Savu was at 31. There is no sign of any rain for tonight. Tomorrow, yes, it's Friday. There's just something very special about Fridays. The day just seems to brighten up itself. Even though it will rain tomorrow, just about in the midday and in the evening bit. Tomorrow's temps, majority of the Western Division is looking all hot with highs of 32 and lows of 24. Looking further on to Saturday, it's shopping time and good news. It's looking pretty clear just for the day bit, but more showers are expected in the evening. Out at sea, northwest to northeast winds gusting up to 25 knots. And to the tides, the next low tide tomorrow morning is at 10.36 with a high tide at 4.49. And that, Jackie, is FPC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Impulse today, we asked people, do you support the inclusion of one more seat in Parliament? Uh, it can be fair for everyone to voice each of their opinions, not just voiced by a regular one. Yes, I do. Yes, I support. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, policemen in several Russian cities pulled over women yesterday, which was International Women's Day, but instead of writing tickets, they handed out roses. March 8th is similar to Valentine's Day in Russia. Recapping the main stories. LTA told to clean up its act and over 1,000 child abuse and neglected cases recorded. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our weekly poll question, this week we are asking, will the new malls opening up create more competition? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, tonight's shot of the day came from Suva and was sent by Johnny Tomusi. The thunderstorm, which lasted more than two hours, was like a light show with bright long streaks of light tearing through the night. Thunder and lightning had many running for cover.
Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. Until next time, from the team and I, good night. कमल रोशनी है हम लोगों में रहते हैं और मिर्ची एफ एम सबसे बेस्ट स्टेशन है हमारा नाम मिर्ची है हम गोल्ड टाउन तावुआ में रहता है और मिर्ची इज हॉट इन तावुआ निवेश तमरा में रहता है सुनता है मिर्ची एफ एम इज वेरी हॉट मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट